Acts chapter 24. And after five days, almost a week, Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Terodius, who informed the governor against Paul. That here comes the Jews that are challenging Paul, and they bring an eloquent speaker. And when he was come forth, Terodius began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by these we enjoy great quietness, that very worship deeds are done unto his nation by their providence. We accept it always, in all places, most noble Felix, with all things. Oh, man, that's bull. Turn it off. <laughs> Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious on today, then go home. I pray thee that thou wouldst hear us of thy clemency, mildness, a few words. He already spoke too many words. For we have formed this man a pestilent fellow, a plague causer, a destructive person, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also has gone about to profane the temple. That's all lies. Five and six, what we just read to the temple, it's all lies. Exactly what they did to Jesus. They're lying about him. A mover of sedition? Well, that's what you think. But those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not sedition. It's the way of life. Among all the Jews throughout the world, the known world, that's true, kind of. But Paul's not bringing the Jews sedition. He's bringing them the way, the truth, and the light. To the world, it's, it's sedition. But the world's way are sedition of Satan. And a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. No, Christians, they said in Antioch. I don't even think Paul has ever been or come from Nazareth. Or Nazarenes. But they know that Jesus of Nazareth. See, they knew where Jesus was from. Remember before, we know not where you're from. We know not where this guy is. Yes, you did. You knew. Who also had gone about to profane the temple. Now, this is the main charge. Remember a couple of chapters back, they caught Paul in the temple. He's purifying himself with four Jewish men. James wants Paul to say, hey, listen, you know, we've heard you lived a little wild with those Gentiles. You take these four Jews, go in the temple, purify yourself, and show, listen, you know what? You're civilized. To us, Jews at least. Whom we took and would have judged according to our law. The law would prescribe that Paul would be killed. Now let me read you something about the law. With Paul, too. Now this is what Paul would have. I'm going back to Deuteronomy 13. In verse 6. If thy brother, a Jew, or the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, all Jewish family, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thy own soul entice thee secretly well they're not doing it secretly he's walking right in the temple i mean he's walking right in the synagogue excuse me and he's proclaiming the gospel to the old testament that jesus christ so already they're wrong saying let us go and serve other gods well not gods serve jehovah the lord jesus christ but to them jehovah and jesus are gods they're not one. So are like Jehovah Witnesses. Which thou hast not known. Well that's totally wrong. Because they know who Jesus Christ is. You're talking to the very high priest that saw Jesus Christ. That talked to Jesus Christ. Watched Jesus Christ being beaten. You know who he is. You've seen his works. You've heard his testimony. Thou nor thy fathers. Naming the gods of the people which are round about you. Gentiles. Jesus Christ is not a Gentile God. Nigh unto thee or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Get that? That's what they said to Paul. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shall thou spare it, neither shall thou conceal him. Don't hide him. But thou shalt surely kill him 
And thy hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. Afterwards, the hand of all thy people. That's exactly what Paul's doing. Or was doing. These people are proclaiming a false god to Jews. And according to the law, you're to stone them. You're to kill them. And all the people are to take part. Yes, that's in the law. But this is not Paul. This is not Jesus. This is not the apostle. It's not done secret. They know exactly who Jesus Christ is. They just fail one to believe on him. The nations of people, Gentiles, and Jewish people are believing on this. But just to keep our jobs, we're turning away from them. So it's true. We're going to judge them by our law, but according to God, Paul has not broken a law. The priests have broken a law by crucifying Jesus, by killing Stephen, by beating Peter and John, by the Jews giving Paul a hard time where they're the ones breaking the law. If they want to be under the law. You know how they don't have to be under law and not be charged? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and plead all what they're doing under the blood of God. Said, what sins are you talking about? But you see, they're putting themselves under the law. And that's not the thing you want to do. Because if you're going to put yourself under the law, you got to fulfill all the law, 100%. And no man could ever do that but Jesus Christ. But the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us with great violence, took him away. Let's go to 2132 real quick. Let's go to 2132. Let's see this big violence. And who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down onto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldier, they left beating off Paul. That's the Jews. And the chief captain came near. We, now we know his name, Lydius. When the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. Where is this great violence? With violence he came and took us. But the chief captain, Lydius, that we know his name, came upon us with great violence, took him away out of our hands. Really? You liar. You lie. This whole thing is almost a lie. Commanding his accusers to come unto thee. Yes. By examine of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all things. Yes. Whereof we accuse it. No, Lydius is like, you know what? This guy needs proper judgment. This guy needs to be put before a court, not in the hands of a mob. Then Paul, after that, the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, All right, Paul, they're done speaking. Your turn to speak. Look how orderly the Roman government is as far as judgment. You said your words, Paul, you got an open statement. America is following Rome. Look at her buildings in Washington, D.C. Do they look like Jerusalem? Do they look like Jewish buildings? Or do they look like Roman buildings? The top of the White House. There's a goddess up there. There's a, 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 a thing of uh, Washington's monument. You can find in the Vatican. You can find in other places of, of profanity. You see a big uh, marble statue of Lincoln, which is profane. The buildings all listen. Our government is found upon Rome. The new government of America. So is our court system. For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, he's talking about Felix. Felix, you're an expert. I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand. That there are yet but 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem for the worship. It's only been 12 days. 12 days Paul could have been and whatever it took him to get to Jerusalem. He could have been going to Rome. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man. I wasn't in there disputing. I was there. Yes. Neither raising up the people neither in the synagogues nor in the city 
Paul did not do what he did in the Asian nations, in the synagogue. He did not walk in the temple and have a ruckus. He went to the temple. He did his purifying. He... Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. They can't prove it. I've got the four men that were with me. But this I confess on today, that after the way which they call heresy, all right, this is their heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. Their heresy is I worship the God of the, my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, let me ask you a question, Mr. Jehovah Witness. Who's What God has Paul been preaching? Jesus. There you go. Do you need any more reason that Jesus is God and God is Jesus? Believe in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. The law and the prophets spoke about God and spoke about Jesus. They're there. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there should be a resurrection of the dead, both of the judge and unjust. And you find that in Daniel. There is coming a day that all the graves are going to open up for all humans. Now the rapture, that be all the saved Christians alone. There are some uh, Jewish raptures in the tribulation period. But eventually when time is gone, the millennia is gone, and the time has stopped, and heaven and, I mean, hell and uh hell and the dead are going to be raising up their dead eventually everyone will have a resurrection and judge before God and here do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and toward men listen what I'm doing right now I am pure I have no regrets I have no guilt that's the peace of God by the Holy Spirit. Now, after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation, Jerusalem, Jews, and offerings. And we read about that in Acts 11, 29, 30. Remember, I told you, we talked about the missionary church was giving aid to the home church. There was a dearth in the land. Paul was one of the people that would bring the money. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with mul with multitude nor with tomo. This time they caught me in the temple. Listen, I've been in Jerusalem before, sir. I came to help the church. Where was their complaining then? Yes, sir, Felix, whatever title Felix would get, I was in the temple. Complete, yes. But I was doing the Jewish pur purification. I wasn't with a multitude, and there was no tumult. Who ought to have been here beside thee? And object, object if they had uh, against you. Where are these people that caught me? Where are the people that are claiming that I caused this ruckus in the temple? Where, yeah, here's a chief priest. Here's this elegant orator. But where are the people that could, that caught hold of me? Where are the people who are going to rip me alive had not been for uh, Lysias? Where are they? They got a problem with me. Why ain't they st standing in this court? Whatever you call Felix. And Paul is treating Felix with utmost respect. But, hey, the people that should be here, he's saying, are not here. Or else, let these same here say, if they have found any evil in, do, in me while I stood before the council, these people that did show up, if I've done evil, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, Touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. And that happened before. You know what their main problem is, Felix? Yes, Paul? They're doubting the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's their problem. That's exactly what I've been teaching through all Asia. That is my ministry. The resurrected of Jesus Christ. And they don't like it. That's why we're here. 
And when Felix heard these sayings, having more perfect knowledge of that way. Now, what of that way? Where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. And Felix had understanding of the Christians and the followers and apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that. He deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down. All right, you guys mentioned Lysias. I may be saying his name wrong. I apologize. I want to hear out of Lysias' mouth what happened that day. Oh. Oh. I will know the utmost of your mouth. Listen, when Lysias comes down and I ask him questions, I'm going to know Paul. Or I'm going to know chief captains who's on your side. But Paul, I know what you've been preaching. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and let him have liberty. That's interesting. Paul can go about. And that he should for, forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come on to. Listen, people want to bring him anything. He wants to teach them. They want to have give him all liberty. <laughs> Look at that. You know that's God working. But again, remember, Paul's not where he's supposed to be. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewish, and that's how he's Jewish, Jewish, Jewess. Well, you knew Felix knew the customs of the Jews because he married a Jew. Only thing is she stepped out of the, of the law to marry this guy, which the law said she wasn't supposed to. Well, look at that. He sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Well, look at that. Paul, come here. I got my wife here, Jewish. Jewish. You know what we want to hear? You want to hear my testimony against? No. You want to hear what I have to? No. Well, what do you want to hear, Felix? Mrs. Felix? We want to hear about Christ. <laughs> oh, look at that. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. What's that judgment to come? Man, if you don't believe on Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. What is temperance? God is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. What is righteousness? That's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. This guy is teaching to a, to a ruler, a judge of a nation called Rome. He is preaching the death, burial, resurrection. And you're going to go to hell if you don't believe. And you better believe that God's long-suffering. He's giving you time right now to believe. And the only righteousness you have is Jesus Christ. How's that for a message? And watch this. Judgment to come. Ready? Felix trembled. The Holy Spirit is working on Felix. This guy is trembling at the gospel that Paul is preaching. You're going to go to hell. You're going to be judged by God. Felix trembled. And watch. And answered. Go thy way for this time. I, I can't deal with it right now. You realize Felix could have got saved that morning or at whatever it was if he just didn't say, go away. You know how many people I've met in my lifetime? Go that way. Get, get, I can't deal with it right now. And I pray, I thank God that I did not say to God, go that way for this time. I thank God. Because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior and I'm saved and I know it. I don't know what ever happened to Felix. Nothing's ever said about him. Did he finally get right? I have no idea. But right now, go thy way for this time. He's putting Jesus off. When I have a convenient season, you know what that means? I can receive Christ later. You ever hear have anybody tell you, I'll do it later? I have men in prison tell me. Oh, later on, I'll trust Christ. You're a Felix. I'll wait till I get older. I want to sow my wild. I want to I want to do whatever I want. And then later on, when I get to be old and I get closer to God by years of death, I'll do it then. I will call for thee. Now it's quite interesting because if Felix says, if I really want to get convicted and really want to do right, I know who to call. Let 
Felix has a wonderful, great testament. I want to hear about Jesus. I don't want it now, but if I do, I know who to call. He's listened to a guy who's brought before him in chains with a charge of destructing the, the, the world. And he tells Paul, I know the way of Christ. Verse 22. And Felix heard these things, having a more perfect knowledge of the way. I have planted, Apollo's watered, and it doesn't look like God gets increased. Somehow Felix has already been witness to of Jesus Christ. Verse 22. And the watering comes, verse 25. Did Satan take that seed? Or did the cares and riches? I don't know. I can't answer that. But I do see right now, as far as this chapter, I can safely say 95% Felix rejected Jesus Christ as his Savior. But after two years... Okay. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul. Kind of like a bail's bond. Somebody would give money, you know, we'll pay for Paul. We'll take care of him. We'll keep him in line. You know, we'll keep him out of your hair. That he might lose him. So he has liberty in 23, but in 26, he's still in jail. He's still bound. He can't he is house arrest. He can't leave the country. Sent for him that oftener and commune with him. But after two years, two years, that's a long time. Porteus Festus came in Felix's room. And Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. He's a people pleaser. Paul is back in jail, still in jail, and he's wasted two years in Caesarea. He's not even in Jerusalem. He's in Caesarea. All because he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit said, don't you go. I'm going. He's got the witness. Felix cannot ever tell God if he ends up at the great white throne judgment because I don't know. If he ends up at the great white throne judgment, man, you imagine God laughing at him and saying, really? I sent you to, I sent you Paul. And Paul witnessed to you. Would you like me to quote from you? Because I can open the book of Acts and show you exactly what you said. <laughs> you imagine the word of God being opened up and to proclaim what your stupid mouth said? It's amazing. <laughs>